I, I want to get into a little bit about the background, because I think when the president announced you as Secretary of Agriculture, I thought, perfect yeah. choice. You actually know something about agriculture. You grew up in it. Well, my mom and dad uh, bought a place in Bonaire, Georgia, 1938. Uh, they'd just recently married. My dad was a lifelong farmer. The blessings of meaningful, purposeful work, I don't think you could replace it from growing up on a farm. You mentioned feeding the calves, even at the age of six or seven, bottle feeding calves to beginning plowing fields at eight or nine or 10, and then pitching hay. I remember pitching those square bales of hay and leaving the hay field going directly to our Little League game. So <laughs> it was a great way to grow up. A big thing has happened recently yes. with the passage of the USMCA, the US-Mexico-Canada uh, Trade Agreement. Why does that matter, first to farmers, but then to every single American? Well, indeed, as you know, President Trump heard a lot in the campaign about the unfair trade degree deals that we'd had. This one had been in for almost 23 or four years, and frankly, it had been pretty good for agriculture, but had not been good for the manufacturing sector. This USMCA agreement, Mike, is better overall for the U.S. economy, particularly farmers and manufacturing in health and labor and environment and many other things that uh, make up a good deal. There, there's been a lot of pain from the farming community because of uh, some of the gridlock with yeah. China. Do you see that getting uh, resolved so that farmers who have big exports to China are going to come out in better shape in the long run? I do, and that's exactly what President Trump has committed and told me early on. We're going to make it better, and that's what we see happening here now with this phase one deal with China. Mike, you know that we've been in an economic war with China for 20 years. China's not played by the rules. They've continued to grow their economy at the expense of other economies, particularly the U.S.'s, uh, throughout these last 20 years since they joined the, the WTO. And uh, frankly, President Trump realized that decided and determined to reset this relationship where China needed to compete on a fair level playing field with the rest of the world and our farmers and, and, and manufacturers in the U.S. And that's what he's done. I think this phase one agreement is a great agreement. Hopefully China will realize that and sign it and uh, hopefully soon and we can get back to a more normalized relationship and our farmers will be thrilled. It essentially doubles the amount of imports that ch uh, China will get from the U.S over uh, any previous import record. Because of the way American farming is done so efficiently, we spend less uh, on our food than virtually any developed country in the world. How significant is that for the rest of our economy? Every family in America pays less for their food on an annual basis than any other developed country in the world. And it may be billions, potentially a trillion dollar de uh, mm. a deal. That means more disposable income in our families' pockets because of the productivity and the efficiency of the American farmer. We hear a lot about subsidies to the farmer, but that's the real subsidy that farmers are giving to the American consumer. And I, I hope more Americans will understand and appreciate that. Want to bring up the SNAP program. It's uh, been under fire recently because uh, I, I think some very common sense approaches that you've taken at the USDA to say that, uh, look, we want to help people have food on their table and, and you know, make sure that poor people have access to good food. But if a person's able-bodied, uh, they ought to be able to put something in, put some skin in the game to be able to get the benefits. So why should that be controversial? Well, I don't know why it should be controversial. In fact, Americans are compassionate, they're generous, they want to help people that need a hand up, but they don't intend for it to be a lifestyle. And so it called for 120 days for able-bodied, that's uh, no disabilities, for elderly, non-elderly, that's 18 to 49, Mike. We are elderly, I guess, after <laughs> you're over 49, so yeah. we're elderly, but... Uh, uh, then with no dependents. We're not talking about parents or pregnant women. We're talking about people who can and need to go to work. And the fact is, what you know what we're requiring of them? 20 hours per week of work or 20 hours to be in training in order to get the skills for a job, or even they can volunteer. We think that's a pretty small price of skin in the game for someone to receive the generous and compassionate benefits from the Americans. I couldn't agree more. I don't think anybody that's out there working 40, 60, 80 hours a week will say, what, 20 hours a week? I'll trade places. Be happy to do it. <laughs> well, right. Mr. Secretary, thank you. It is a pleasure to see you. Thanks for doing what you're doing for the American farmer and rancher. 
I want to remind our audience that you can find out more about uh, Sonny Perdue and the work that he's doing at USDA at USDA.gov. Follow on social media at USDA. Follow the secretary on Twitter at Secretary Sonny.